what's going on everybody I just wanted to make this video for every person that's walked into a machine room and just feels lost everyone's been in that spot so let's get into this video and show you how the wreck goes so right now we're going to turn around to the back of it so that's pretty much where it starts for me to the discharge side You have the discharge header, which is a common discharge line for all the compressors. Then you have the hydrosaurs, which hold down the refrigeration lines. The discharge muffler, which reduces the vibration of the compressors that lines it so it won't break and crack. So you follow it. Next, we go to the oil separator. Now the oil separator separates the oil from the hot gas. And it has a little sock inside of it that pretty much just pulls all the oil out. I know it's not the correct color, but it's just to show you. At the bottom of this, it has a little float that allows oil to go through the line to the compressors. I'll get into that into another video. Now, following this line set, we're going to go to the condenser. Some stores have air cool condensers. This is a water cool tower. So as you can see, the line set on top, the discharge header comes in, it comes in hot, just hot vapor. As you can see the tower, what it does in this version, because it's water cooled, the water is spraying down, the pump, the bundle, the droplet comes out as liquid. So going back to the rack, now again, we're coming in as hot vapor, going in that saturated state, becoming liquid, out to the back to the rack, into the receiver. So that's where this line right here is going into. So there it is, the receiver. Now all the receiver does is hold the excess refrigerant that's not in circulation right now. So I'll put a little flashlight so you can see the level, which at this store we don't have any. I made a previous video on how to check the receiver level for stores. Now coming out of the receiver, it's a liquid dryers. And what the liquid dryer does is absorb any contaminant in the system. There's three main liquid dryers that we use. The standard ones, which is pretty much your basic every day. The second one is for the moisture. You put your gauges on and you get a little bit of air and your valves are stuck. These are the ones we use, RCW's 48s. And the last one is for burnouts. If a compressor just burns out, the windings and it's in the system, you know that smell. We put these in. Now the last two we only use for two weeks and we put standards back in. So now we're coming up to the side glass. It's flashing as you can see right now. But the look of side glass, it's just a look inside the system. It indicates if we have an issue. So right now you can see it's flashing so it could need gas in the future. And here we are on the liquid header. So it's a common liquid header for all the systems. In this rack we have 11 systems so it feeds everything. all the way down here. The one to the far right is going to be the first one to go warm when it's low on gas. Got the liquid solenoid right there. But you can see the air going up. This is going out to the cases, the liquid refrigerant. All the way to the sales floor out there. And then coming back from the cases. Once it goes through the TXV, through the evaporator, it comes back as a low vapor through the suction line. It comes into the suction group header right here, which is a common suction line for all the compressors. Here you can see it from the front. So all these three compressors are working towards the same goal, to reach suction set point. So once it reaches it, one will cycle off and it takes turn. So they cycle about 10 times per hour, 240 times a day, each compressor. And that's max what it's allowed. Anything over that, then it's a bit excessive. And that's pretty much it for refrigerant flow in the machine room. So I hope this video helps you have a better understanding of it. And when you're looking at it, you kind of be like, oh, okay, that's what that is. So thank you so much. Leave a like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.